On the heels of an exciting finish in St. Louis, Missouri, Cassio Diaz continues his dominant start to the 2024 Unleash the Beast season, taking home his first career win on the tour, coming on the heels of another exciting rookie season of the PBR Team Series with the Kansas City Outlaws. We'll find out more about that and all the great rides that went down in St. Louis right here on PBR Now. Welcome inside the Cowboy Channel Studios in an exclusive live version on Ride Pass on Pluto TV. Luke Kaufman here this week. Join alongside the Arizona Ridge Riders head coach, Paulo Krimber. And Paulo, let's dive right into it. You were there. You had front row seats to everything that happened in St. Louis. But Cassio Diaz, he is the real deal. We got to see him all team series. He was the runner up at the rookie of the year race. How good is this young man from Brazil? Uh, Cassio Diaz, without a doubt, it's one of the most special talents rookie we ever seen. I mean, he just came here. Uh, two years ago at the end of the season, he was a little lost. And then in, I think JW and Guilherme did a great job guiding him to the right path. We're going to see a lot more of that because that kid is for real. Let's see uh, how good he was in St. Louis and recap and watch all the action and how it unfolded to get him his first win right here on the re-ride. This was the one that uh, was the icing on the cake on the weekend. He had to ride this bull in the championship round, and he conquers Mike's motive for 90 and a half points. Just a phenomenal ride there for Cassio, winning in that championship round. But on the heels of that, another Kansas City outlaw that we talked about, Bob Mitchell, had to ride here, had the first pick in the championship round. Pick Smokestack, but comes up a little bit short, but a good weekend for Bob as well. Yeah, Bob has been riding great. He just turned around like at the end of the season, the team season, and Cassio, both of them from a teammate, but Cassio did what he's supposed to do. He rode his bull for eight seconds, and Bob missed the opportunity to win. But Cassio's going to do a lot more than what he did this weekend, last weekend for sure. And it wasn't just that ride in the championship round. His campaign for this win started in round one. Here on Buzz, 87 and a half points. These are the type of performances we've come to expect from the Kansas City Outlaw Superstar. Yeah, Cassio, you can see, he's just locked in. He's so confident. You cannot see in any anything wrong on that ride and he's been doing a lot that lately you better watch out he had another good ride in round two on hunted down we and remember if you recall back to the team series towards the tail end of the season Casio was favoring his riding wrist he, he had some he had some lower extremity soreness but now he's had time to heal and this is the type of Casio that we came to see at the beginning of the team series and hopefully he keeps it up yeah without a doubt like that was his weakness during the teams because he had a bad knee away from his hand he couldn't handle it that 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 shows he's 100 percent healthy now and we're going to see it no matter direction they go is going to give deliver just big scores like that Paulo, you mentioned it we saw him really for the first time at the pbr world finals at the end of last season prior to the start of the team season and him joining kansas city but right now after two events cassio diaz finds himself the number one man in the world but looking at everybody in the top 10 there's a lot of great bull riders in here. Some that we come to expect and some that are surprising, like Hayden Bunch, who had the big win in Tucson. That's right. I mean, you can see, like, during the teams, everybody says, hey, you think Castle D is going to do good just like the teams because the bulls were given, you know, picks. No, he's doing just that. His number one, he's proven himself. Hayden Bunch has been riding great. He was number one, for, you know, for the first weekend in after Tucson. Now he's just bumped out number two. But that age, you see, Jose, JRV, Eduardo, a lot of veterans and a lot of young guys over there. It's going to be interesting here. Talking about those young veterans, I want to focus on two that were down at the bottom of that list. Alan De Souza had a huge weekend in St. Louis this weekend. Also, Paulo Rosetto, who we had, who we really got to see shine in Las Vegas at the team's championship. Yeah. Alan, I mean, Alan Souza is just a great kid. He's been going through some uh, personal stuff with his dad, but he's here, he's riding. I think he's not even a full percent yet. He's going to be a lot more. He's better than that. And Rosado, you can see, like, the, the ride before, his first ride in the short round, he was riding with the right-handed. And then he got a re-ride, get on to one or two step with the left hand. And you can see how special that is. It's going to be he's playing a, a, over his advantage for sure. We'll get to recap and watch some of those rides of St. Louis when we go back and recall the top rides and the rank rides of the weekend. Also take a look in at some Power Bull standings right here on PBR Now. If you're watching, stay with us. We'll be right back. Our app now. Before each ride, click Ride or Wreck. Join the live experience from the home screen. Choose if you think it'll be a ride or a wreck and see how you fare. Earn points based on the result. After each ride, submit your fan score. Earn points when you correctly predict the judges' scores. At the end of the night, we'll announce the fan's ride of the night based on your score. 
all within the PBR app. Bull's got his head down. He's willing to get his head up. He's going to take him anyway. That's why I wanted him to get his head up. Boy, oh boy. That became a five-second example of why you may not want to become a bull rider. Those you down did his best to take down Vieira. Joao Ricardo Vieta getting crushed up against the shoots and getting kicked on the backside of it. Uh, I was just fortunate. I was thankful to see Joao walk away from that incident. It was a scary moment for a guy that, that is near and dear to everybody's hearts in the PBR. That's, it's scary when those moments like that happen, especially in the mix of competition. Yeah, I mean, JRV, it's without a doubt one of the toughest ones out there, if he's not the toughest. But what went his way on that rack was because when that bull put his full Weight on, you know, on that shoot, his body was a little cocked to the side, and that helped him. But it could have been really bad, and and I think that just be, thank God for him being safe like that. Hoping that he gets to bounce right back from that, because you know, looking back to what he did just a, a couple weeks prior in Tucson, he was three for three there, and you know, well inside the top ten of the world standing. So we hope to see him back as the excitement and the action turns towards Johntown, Pennsylvania. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but looking back to St. Louis, let's talk about the top rides, the rank rides of the weekend, and we've got them the top four in order. Well, let's go in reverse order. Let's go four, three, two, one. Why don't we? Let's go right. with a round one win. Eduardo Aparecido, Fast Eddie conquers risky business for 88 and a quarter points. I mean, Eduardo is a great rider. Right now, he's in the best shape I've ever seen him. He's just riding dominated. Either way, that's what he can do every time. Yeah, that bull, he, he goes left, he goes right, and Eduardo just right there, square right. and center. I love to see that smile on Eduardo. Picks up the round one win here on Saturday night. Round three, or excuse me, number three, on the rank rides, Dalton Castle and Pearl Snap right here with the 88 and three quarter points. This is this is uh, what we come to expect to see from Dalton, but Dalton's been struggling a little bit ever since the tail end of Las Vegas. Yeah, Dalton is so talented. He can ride those rank bulls either into his hand or away from his hand, but I don't know what happened. Like you say, he's been struggling for a little bit, but he always kind of shining on his own way. Maybe that's the ride he needs to turn things back around as we look forward to the kickstart of this 2024 Unleash the Beast season. Number two on the list, Rafael Dos Santos, just jumps out and surprises us and throws us a 90-point ride like he does every now and then. When he shows up, he'll be, he'll throw in those 90-point rides. We saw him do it with the Austin Gamblers, and he does it great here in St. Louis. That's right. Now, Rafael has just been battled with a groin problem for a couple years now, but that's uh, that's him all day long. He's one of the strongest right-hand guy on tour right now. And finally, the number one rank ride of the week as we go back and we uh, put another feather in the cap of Cassio D. 90 and a half points here on Mike's Motive. And talking about all the great rides, when you looked at St. Louis, that pin of bulls, a lot of new bulls, some uh, some bulls that we saw frequently on the team series and at last year's World Finals, but a lot of new bull blood in the Power Bull standings, and it's good to see. It is good to see. Like, Riley's been doing a great job picking them and giving the new guys opportunities to show what they have, and that's great. Just young talent riders, young talent bulls, that's what PBR is for. Talking about the Bulls of the PBR and the Unleash the Beast series, we're going to highlight one of the Power Bulls who gets his first Power Bull ranking of the year right here on PBR Now. We'll watch that when we return. We'll also talk about the top freestyle bullfighters in the world are going to be crowning a champion right here in Fort Worth in the next two weeks. We'll talk about that and more right here on PBR Now when we return. Talking about the Power Bull standings here on PBR Now, there is a new top bull at the top of the standings at the end of St. Louis. We talk about the big white bull from Gene Owens and Jane Clark. Talking about Manhater, locked in 46 points against Dalton Castle this past weekend. And this is a bull that's gaining a bit of a reputation, like one that you know you can be a lot of points on, but you're going to have to earn it if that's you want right. to do that. I mean, you're right. Nobody, the guys don't like, don't favor him as a easy to ride. He's a bucker but they kind of try to avoid to get on him because that's what he does is just a, a strong, just a kick over his head. And if you ride him, it's gonna be a bunch, but it's, it's gonna be tough. And looking at the bull standings, you, you see a lot, of, a lot of names that are familiar. You see Legend, Smokestack, both that were in contention for a, a bull title race last year. Mike's Motive, 
that we saw carry Cassio Diaz to the big win there. But there's a lot of new bulls. We talked it about is. these bulls that don't have many outs that are here in the standings, but we're going to put a lot of outs on them for the Unleash the Beast, like 18 consecutive weeks once we get into New York. It's going to be awesome. Like those bulls are going to have to be proving themselves, just like the younger bulls coming in with the veteran bulls, just the same way with the riders. We're going to see who's going to be the best at the end of the deal. This weekend and next weekend, the top freestyle bullfighters in the world compete for the largest purse in the history of freestyle bullfighting. The Ultimate Bullfighters World Finals happening right here in the Fort Worth Stockyards District at Cowtown Coliseum, December 7th through 9th and 14th through 16th. And now, Pendleton Whiskey takes us behind the shoots and we talk to the number one man in the Ultimate Bullfighters World Standings and the two-time world champion, Chance Mormon from Lytle, Texas, going to have the opportunity to join with us here on PBR Now today. Chance Mormon, two world titles, going for your third. Brother, tell us your definition of freestyle bullfighting, the sport that you are becoming a master at. Freestyle bullfighting, it's 60 seconds, man versus beast, and it's as much of a fight as it is, it's an art at the same time. You got those gritty guys that can just keep going and keep going, and then you got guys that are stylish to slow down and make it look real nice. Chance, your, your most recent world title last year you got at the end of 2022, also 2020, but your career spans way back since you were 15 years old, wanting to, the desire to be a bullfighter. I mean, being that young and, and being drawn to bulls that are trying to kill you, that, that's crazy mentality to me, but tell us a little bit about your insight and the mentality to be a freestyle bullfighter. Um, being a freestyle bullfighter, it's 90% mental. I mean, sure, there's physical side of it. You're running for 60 seconds straight, but at, the mental game is way, way different because you're, like you said, you're running, running down or you have a beast trying to run you down that's trying to hurt you and put you, put you down bad and you just got to deal with that and suck it up and nod your head. Hey, Chase, this is Paula. Good seeing you, buddy. Uh, I watch you a lot, and one thing I noticed, you're talking about being confident and do everything to, to be the right way, but I see you run, and you look so confident, like you're not even working, you know? You just look so smooth and classy. It's just like you're dancing. And how you do, I mean, what you do to get to that point? I just put in a lot of work. Like Luke said, I started at this game really young. and I just really focused on trying to be the best I could be. And I really focused on those best guys when I was coming up. And I just tried to take all the best of everybody's style and put it into one. And I just try to make it. I just try to have fun. If you're not having fun, if, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. That's right. You're doing a great job at it, buddy. The, the fun definitely shows through every time you're in competition. Let's talk about the competition that's coming up starting tomorrow, actually, at Cowtown Coliseum. There's 24 bullfighters. Let's talk about the field of bullfighters. We have people like Cy Ferguson, the young kid that's from right here outside of Fort Worth. You have Cotter Quesada, who's basically been a resident of Cody Webster's place, learning from one of the greats. You even got your best pal and uh, fellow roommate, Coy Kraut. Talk about the class of guys that are here at this year's World Finals. Man, all the guys coming out here are really good and really just classy bullfighters. They come out there and know what they want to do and they know how to do it. And they want to be the top guy as bad as I want to be. And we all make it known. So for, for the unsuspecting fan, anybody that's watching, you know, you gave your synopsis of freestyle bullfighting, what it is, but what what can a fan expect if they come to the Cowtown Coliseum over the next two weeks? What what does the Ultimate Bullfighter show entail? And you're going to see everything. It's a wild show. You're going to see all the hookings. I mean, obviously there's going to be hookings. It's a dangerous game, but you're going to see guys do amazing things, jump them, jump them backwards, do flips over them, all kinds of stuff. 
Well, Chance, I know you're going for your I'm third good. world title. What what can we expect to see from you? I know you're going out for it, and you 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 kind of wait for these moments. You wait when there's $150,000 on the line. What can we expect to see from the two-time, hope-to-be three-time world champion to try and get that third gold buckle? I don't like to lose, and everybody around me knows that, and I try to make that known, and I won't make it easy for him to win. I'm not going to disclose anything special, but just right. know I'm not here to lose. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great that's a great answer uh, to know you. Now I know how you make that look so easy because you put into work, you don't like to lose, and you're natural talent. Congratulations and good luck. You're doing a great job. Keep it up, but it's fun to watch. Thank you. I appreciate it. Best of luck this weekend, Chance Borman, and everybody there at the Ultimate Bullfighters World Finals. Get your tickets at the box office online at PBR.com as well. UBF World Finals, December 7th through 9th and the 14th through 16th. When we come back here on PBR Now, we'll talk about where the Unleash the Beast is headed to next. That's Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The Keystone State has the best bull riders in the world, and we'll tell you all about it right here when we return. If you're headed to Las Vegas for the Ring National Finals Rodeo, there's one party you don't want to miss. The PBR and Kid Rock and Yellowstone's Cole Hauser joining together for Kid Rock's Rock and Rodeo Party at the House of Blues inside Mandalay Bay, December 13th. It's going to be a night of fun. And with all of the who's who of PBR, we've got legends in rodeo going to be there as well as we announce a brand new revolution in the world of rodeo that's going to be coming to Arlington in May. You do not want to miss that party. Tickets are on sale now. Go grab them at Ticketmaster. Dot com and uh, that's going to be a fun party in between the Unleashed to Be stops of Johnstown and Manchester, New Hampshire. And talking about the stops on the Unleashed to Beast, we're we're headed up north. We're headed to where it's cold, Paulo. <laughs> talking about Albany, New York, Manchester, Johnstown before that. But then the year really kicks off at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world there in New York City. And Paulo, you've ridden bulls in a lot of places, a part of the PBR for a very long time. Talk about the energy and talk about the fans, just, just the excitement inside the buildings when you get in that part of the world that some a lot of people get to witness bull riding for the first time. Um, it's just like amazing because we knew, got a lot of friends, Brazilian especially, people who lives there and they've never been to one. And to be there, I won. My first event was in uh, uh, Massachusetts. And then I was probably the first one, the one, first one to win Madison Square Garden inside of Madison Square Garden back in 2000. That's something so unbelievable because seeing back then when they didn't know nothing, look me like, you know, wearing a hat. Now they enjoy it. It's just there, the sold out part is just something so amazing for the people to have something new to watch. Uh, best bull riders, best bull, bulls in the world. And then just for the guys to see something they never see. A lot of young Brazilians never been and never see snow in their life. It's just uh, a whole big party. It's going to be great. New York brings a lot to the table, not just for the fans, but for the riders as well, like you're talking about. New York is the first major of the season, so more points, more added money, more reason to really come out swinging at the start of the season there. That's without a doubt. For example, John Creamer, he's just got find out he got some injury in his hand. He's going to wait into Madison Square Garden because that's a major, a lot of points. It's the, the right time to come and full power and show what he can capable what he's capable to do. So you talked about your win in Madison Square Garden. Is that is that the one that you remember the most? Was it was it Massachusetts your first win here in the states or is there somewhere else? Uh, I think uh Square Garden got a, you know, to the top of the list for sure because that's something that was so famous I just heard of them and then to be able to win event in there for the very first time and see where it, that leads us to be right now. It's something special. I hold that to the top of the list for sure. Can't forget the first time. And talking about the first time, we're going to Johnstown, Pennsylvania for the very first time this weekend on the Unleash the Beast series. The home of Slapshot, by the way. I had to give a shout out that to Poirier, Whitey, and the entire crew. But you can watch it all live right there from the seat of your home. 
7.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Ride Pass, and then Championship Sunday, the third round and that final championship round, live on the CBS Sports Network at 2 p.m. Eastern. Coming live right there from the first Summit Arena there in Johnstown. And then we head on to Manchester, Albany, New York, and then it's, it is 18 consecutive weeks leading all the way up to the PBR World Finals and talking about you're you're in the know of, of the injuries of who's in and who's out. Obviously, we talked about your son, John. We talked about Jose Vitor uh, dealing with some injuries right now with the field of riders that are slated to appear in Johnstown. It's a three day event. Who's your favorite? Who are we going with to win this third event of the Unleash the Beast? Man, I think I have to go with the veteran. I, I kind of Probably his biggest fan. Eduardo looks pretty good last weekend. Eduardo Parcito, he rode Preach's kid in the shore round, and he made that bull look like it was just mm -hmm. a day off, you know. I mean, that guy's so talented, so strong, veteran, you know, like JR and all those guys over too, and, and Luciano coming back. But I think J, uh, Eduardo needs to win and to just jump and get that feeling to kick off the season the way he should. All right. Well, we hope it goes out and works out good for you. You'll be there I hanging be out there. with the best, best guys in the world. You guys will be watching it live. We'll come back here next week. We'll be rejoining and recap all the action right here on PBR Now. On behalf of everybody here, Luke Kaufman, Paula Krimber, thank you for being a part of it. Thank Thanks you guys for, for watching, me. and we'll catch you next time. This is what a cowboy looks like in the arena. This is what a cowboy looks like in the stands, on the ranch, at home, around town, and every day. What does your cowboy look like? Find your cowboy at PBRshop.com. Celebrate 30 years of PBR with us.